ocean, over the clouds, and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends, Stinky and Shake! Now it's the Animal Show! Hello, all you little animals out there. I'm Stinky. And I'm Jake. And on today's show, we have the Spoonbill and the Salmon, two animals that know all about migration. Migration. Uh, hey, Jake, what is migration? Well, migration simply means these animals travel from one place to another, usually to lay eggs or look for food. Cool. I love to travel and look for food. <laughs> well, why don't you ask him if you can go along? <laughs> hey. That's a great idea! Oh, no, no, Stinky, I was just kidding Thanks about that. Thanks for talking me into it, Jake. Stinky, I was, but, uh, uh Stinky, uh... And now it's time for... That's amazing! Today, we find out how many sticklebacks a spoonbill can eat. Oh, yeah, you know, I've always wondered about that. Oh. Uh, and by the way, what the heck is a stickleback? <sighs> a stickleback is a little tiny fish. And the spoonbill is a great big bird that can eat up to two sticklebacks every minute. Oh, okay, so that's two per minute. And since the spoonbill eats for about eight hours every day... One minute times eight hours per day. That means a spoonbill can eat as many as 1,000 sticklebacks every day. Oh, I was off by 27 sticklebacks. Uh, from Northwest Africa to the Netherlands... Netherlands. Here is Julius the spoonbill. Here I am, just passing through. Always on the move, I am. Always on the move. <laughs> well, Julius, I'm glad you could take time from your busy migrating schedule to stop by for a visit. Yeah, and I can't wait to see where we are going next. Uh, well, what do you mean, we? Well, Stinky wants to migrate with you. Uh, that's a laugh. <laughs> ah, migrating's not all that easy, young fella. Well, then why do you do it? Well, give me a moment and I'll show you. Ooh. Oh. This is Holland. One of the places where we spoonbills live. Ooh. Now, it's beautiful, but do you go there just for the windmills and the scenery? Oh, it's pretty all right. But we're not there to see the sights. We're there for the good marshes and wetlands. You see, those are the best places for us to get food and build our nests. Oh, it's a mommy spoonbill and her little baby. That's right. She feeds him the way many animals feed their young by digesting the food first, then giving it to him right from her mouth. Well, if Holland has the perfect marshes and wetlands for your nest, why do spoonbills migrate? Because of the weather and the food. It gets too cold there for us during the winter. And the stickleback fish that we eat are only around for part of the year. So you travel to find more fish and to get away from winter. Hey, you got that right. And uh, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful in Holland, but a spoonbill's got to follow the food and the warm weather or we just won't make it. I love food and warm weather. It'll be great to migrate with you. <laughs> Maybe I could pack a lunch. Uh, Stinky, I've seen your lunches. You won't be able to carry it. Mm, especially when you have to fly with it. Uh, but I can't fly. <laughs> then you'll never be able to migrate with spoonbills. Oh. You see, Stinky, we fly thousands of miles every year. Now, where exactly do you go when you migrate? Well, we take off from our nesting areas in Holland and fly along the coast, across France, Spain, and Portugal. Portugal. Then across to Mauritania, on the northwest coast of Africa. Africa. And that's where we spend the winter when it's cold up north. North. Does he always do that? Always. Always. You certainly are graceful, birds. Yes, it's great being a spoonbill. Well, Julius, I guess I won't be able to migrate with you and the other spoonbills. I can't catch fish, I can't fly. Yeah, and don't forget that irritating thing you do where you repeat the names of places. Places. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, otherwise, we spoonbills would love to have you come along. Well, thanks for stopping by, Julius. Yeah, thanks, Julie. OK, well, I, I better be going. And we're about to leave for the coast. So long. Bye. Bye. Stinky, I, I'm sorry you won't be able to migrate with Julius. Oh, that's okay, Jake. Maybe I can migrate with the salmon. Oh, yes, but before you do that, it's time we all migrate over to watch... Oh. <gasps> Baby, Baby Talk. talk. Mm. Oh, come on, Mommy. Let's see down your throat again. <laughs> again? Yeah, come on. It's so cool. Oh, right. <laughs> Look at this. It's really spoony in here. <laughs> Come on. Let me see. Let me see. Come on. It's my turn. Hey, what about me? It's my turn. I'm sorry, dear, but I'm tired. But that's not fair. Please, Mommy. Please, 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 please. Oh, why not? 
Well, how was that? Thanks, Mommy. That was spoony. Well, it's time for the grown-ups to put up their beaks and rest now. But not you, Mommy. You don't need a rest. No, you're gonna play, right? All play and no rest makes for a tired spoonbill. Come along, my dear. Time to spoon. You know, Jake, I think that migrating with salmon is going to be easy. After all, I already know how to swim. Well, Stinky, there's a lot more to migrating with salmon than that. There is? Take a look. When you're swimming against the tide Or going against the flow When you're swimming against the tide It's the hard Migrates is the one that travels. That is absolutely correct, but it doesn't even remotely answer my question. Oh, I'm so glad that I could help. Trap door! <laughs> so glad that you could leave. And now, the answer. The animal that migrates is the snow goose. Here is a flock of snow geese. In the late spring, they migrate north to their nesting grounds in the Arctic. They arrive when there isn't much snow, and they must lay their eggs, raise their young, and leave by the time the snow returns in September. Year in, year out, the snow geese follow the same route. The journey may be over two and a half thousand miles long. The geese fly in a V formation. Why? Because it helps them save energy. Each bird receives a little boost of air from the bird in front. As the bird in the lead receives no help, it will eventually drop back and let another take the lead. This way, the flock can fly further for the same number of flaps. It's Rhonda Rat reporting on the snow goose. Now back to you, Stinky and Jake. Thanks, Rhonda. Uh, you know, Stinky, if you migrate, you'll miss everything that's happening around here. Like what? Well, like Yves Saint Laroche. Ha! I better leave now. Hey, I'll get you for that, you stinker. <laughs> Here's <laughs> Eve. So, the Laradu, what are the little kids? Oh, my God, so quite giddy there. <laughs> Bonjour, my petit Allemand friends. Today, I, Yves Saint Laroche, will show you the best food to take along on your next migration. No one wants to carry around a big, heavy meal when they are traveling. Well, nobody I know anyway. So you must migrate with food that is very, very small. No? We. Oui. Which is why I have created this dehydrated meatball. Now, it looks itsy bitsy, but this meatball can serve 44 caribou, 67 spoonbills, or 1,622 salmon. <laughs> but if you say, how is that possible? 
Oh, you silly creatures! Before you can eat it, you must add a single drop of water. Of course, I will be very careful not to add water to this one, otherwise it will become so large that it would... Oh, dear, crush me! Oh, could someone migrate to this great meatball of my meat section? Oh, hey, wait a minute, maybe I could, I could eat my way out. Thanks, Eve. Stinky, what's all that for? Oh, well, Jake, if you're gonna migrate in water, you gotta bring bath toys. Oh, Stinky, I don't think you're gonna have time for that. But why don't we find out from the salmon himself? Ooh, yeah. Here he is from the rivers of North America, Greenland, Iceland, Australia, Asia, and Siberia. Siberia! Yorick, the salmon. Hello there, going down. Whoa! <laughs> that sure was easier than swimming upstream. Yeah. No strong currents, no waterfalls, no problem. Well, welcome to the show, Yorick. Hi, Yorick. When do we leave? Leave? I just got here. Well, Stinky wants to know when you leave on your next migration. Yeah, I'm gonna go with you. Oh, that's great, Stinky, and you're going to love it. Just take a look. Oh, a clip. Oh, good, good. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, it sure is. Yeah, it's really pretty. But how come we're looking at a picture of a waterfall? Because this is a part of the river we swim when we migrate. Here comes someone now. Well, who's that? Oh, that's just one of my salmon friends. Oh, well, why is he trying to jump up that waterfall? Hey, fella, you're going the wrong way. The river flows in the other direction. You <laughs> fella. Stinky, he is going the right way. When salmon migrate, we swim upstream. Jumping up waterfalls is part of the journey. I understand that salmon can jump 12 feet in the air. That's right, Jake. We flick our tail and arch our back like a high jumper to get as much height as we can. That's an impressive leap for a fish that can weigh over 20 pounds. Well, I'm impressed. But why do you jump up waterfalls and swim the wrong way up rivers? Wouldn't it be easier just to migrate the way the water is going? <laughs> that would be a lot easier. But then we wouldn't get where we're trying to go. Where are you trying to go? Back to where we were born. Oh, that's sweet. You go back to the old riverbed to visit hometown friends? Not exactly, Stinky. You see, salmon always swim back to the same river and stream where they were born. They go there to spawn, which means to lay eggs. Well, now, why do they always go back to the same place? No one knows for sure, Jake, but one thing is certain. We have a real knack for finding our way to our spawning ground, no matter how many obstacles are in our way. Do all the salmon who migrate get back to the spawning grounds? Oh no, I'm afraid not. It's a tough trip, and many just can't make it all the way. They, 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 they don't make it? That's right, Stinky. Not only do we have to swim upstream and over waterfalls, but there are lots of predators along the way, too, who see salmon migration as a chance to grab a meal. G -g grab a meal? Oh, yes. And another thing, we salmon never stop to eat. When we're migrating, there's no time to hunt or feed, so we have to live off the fat that we've stored up the rest of the year. No food? Predators jumping up waterfalls? Gee, maybe I shouldn't bring my bath toys. Oh, that's probably a good idea, Stinky. Because even if you swim as hard as you can against the tide, like these fish are doing, and you get all the way back to the spawning ground, there are still a lot of dangers you will have to face. What kind of dangers? More predators. Like bears, of course. Of course. Not to mention other salmon. Don't mention other salmon. Well, what about other salmon? Well, male salmon are very territorial and will fight to protect their spawning grounds. In fact, we even develop a hooked lower jaw during spawning season just so we can fight anyone who comes into our territory. Ooh, salmon migration sure is tough. And besides, I look terrible with a hooked lower jaw. See? <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of like it. No, I have to agree with Stinky. About my jaw? No, no, about all that salmon have to go through to migrate. Mm. Are you sure it's worth it? Oh, it sure is, Jake. Because, after all, this is how young salmon are born. Oh, that's true. A female salmon will lay thousands of eggs, like these here. Look closely. You can see a baby salmon curled up inside. Wow. Eventually, the eggs hatch, and young salmon like these will start to swim downstream. 
And in a few years, those same salmon will swim back upstream to the same riverbed to spawn again. Yeah, it's the circle of life. Yeah, and I'm getting dizzy just hearing about it. <laughs> That's why I'm so glad you'll be making the trip with me this year, Stinky. Uh, you know, on second thought, I don't... But before really... you go, Yorick, would you mind singing a song? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, Ooh, but, but Jake... Uh, in a minute, Stinky. And now it's time for Yorick to sing the salmon song. What I go through to be with you Is there nothing I wouldn't do And I don't need a lover's call For me to climb up a waterfall These are feelings I can't resist It's the reason that I exist Only one place I have to be and for that reason, I'll cross the sea to spawn. It may not sound a pretty word, but that is why I've gone. I've gone to spawn. Just to be there and by your side. See me swimming against the tide. Up the river and up the stream. All the places that I have been to spawn It may not sound a pretty word But that's why I've gone I've gone to spawn And frankly, I could do with a lie down It's time for... Animal Awards! Today, we'll find out which is the world's biggest fish. Hey, hey, you know, I, I caught the world's biggest fish once, well, but yeah, it got away. It was a whopper. Yeah, potato. so I... is that story. The biggest fish. Is it the pike? Or the hammerhead shark? The whale shark? Ooh. Or the manta ray? And the winner is... The whale shark, which can be more than 50 feet long and weigh more than 18 tons. Ooh, now I'm glad that fish got away. <laughs> the Whale Shark, today's Animal Award winner. Jake, Jake, I, I want to tell you something right now. Okay, but it's time for a story. I meant right now, after the story. All right, gather around, everybody. Here goes. <clears throat> uh, once, once upon a time, time, there were some bears, bears who lived near a waterfall. waterfall. One day, they were wading in the water and wondering what it would be like to whoosh down the waterfall when, bloop, a salmon leaped up right under their noses. Did you see that? said Billy Bear. Well, there goes another one, said Beverly Bear. Let's see if we can catch one and ask how they did it, suggested Bentley Bear. While the bears waited to catch a salmon, the salmon kept leaping over the waterfall. They were too busy swimming upstream to stop to answer questions. I almost got one, said Bentley. Me too, said his friend Bob. I did get one, said Beverly, but she doesn't want to answer my questions. So the bears kept trying to catch the salmon, and they kept missing. So they never did find out how the salmon leapt up the waterfall, but they lived happily ever after anyway. The end. Thanks, everybody. I gotta tell you, Jake, I don't want to migrate with Yorick. It's too dangerous to travel salmon class. Oh, but Yorick is gonna be disappointed. Well, I have to tell him something. Well, I do. I gotta think. Oh, think, think, think. Uh, think, uh, think uh, while Stinky thinks, think, let's think, see think, what's think. up with Bunny and Armstrong. Think, think. Just a minute, Cousin uh, Jakey. Uh, Armstrong, you gotta wear it. I don't want to. Uh, but uh, I'm wearing one. Yes, and you look stupid. Come on. No. It's habitat time. Why am I wearing this thing? What is it? It's a salmon nose. You look very good. It said in the Salmon Cruises brochure that we have to wear them. Salmon Cruises? I'm not going on any Salmon Cruise. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh. See, Armstrong? Oh. We're going to go where salmon goes. See what a salmon sees. Yeah, but if you want me to smell what a salmon smells, forget it. I can't breathe in this thing. Oh, look, look, sea lions! They seem to be able to breathe okay. Can't we wear sea lion noses? What is that? It's a ray! And don't tell me, those are fish. 
Whoa, and that's a big fish. The biggest there is, remember? A whale shark. Oh, yeah. And on your right is a blue shark or reef shark. Huh. Continuing on the route a salmon might take, we are swimming past shoals of fish. Ooh. And over some coral. What is that, and do we have to be so close? It's a spider crab, Armstrong, and, and that's a squat lobster. Hey. Hey, Plenty! How are you? You know her? And now, just like the salmon, we've left the sea and are swimming up the river. Can we please stay on top of the water so I can take off this nose? Okay, Armstrong, but only because I want to show you these swans who are nesting on the river bank. Uh -oh. This heron. Hi, how are you? And this shell duck. Now, what's he looking at? Maybe this stickleback? Or this pike? I can see that we're back underwater again. We're doing as the salmon do. Well, I don't know about you, but I am done. Go. Oh. <sighs> can you take this off now, please? Why? I think it looks good, and it certainly makes you smell better. <laughs> Why am I not laughing? For habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And Armstrong the Salmon Hook. Just back from the salmon cruise. Over to you, Rhonda. Now take this off, would you please? I'm rolling. Yeah. Once again, I'm Rhonda Rat, rodent reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Uh, sir. Yes? Can you answer this question? Which of the following animals does not eat fish? Mm. The gannet? The fish eagle, the puffin, or the hummingbird? Your answer. Ooh, as a fish, I, I'd rather not take the chance of offending any of those birds on account of the fact they might eat me. A good answer, but the correct answer is the hummingbird. Ooh. While all those other birds think fish is the finest, a hummingbird would much rather eat tiny insects and sweet nectar from flowers. <laughs> this is Wanda Rat reporting on the hummingbird. Now back to you, Stinky and Jake. Thanks, Rhonda. Yeah. Well, that's all we have time for today, and I'd like to thank our special guests, Julius the Spoonbill and Yorick the Salmon. Hey, Yorick, come over here. A Stinky has something to tell you. Oh, Stinky, are you ready to go migrating with me? Well, I wanted to tell you that I can't make it because I have jumping up a waterfall phobia. That's a fear of jumping up waterfalls. No, oh, I'm so disappointed. Well, it'll be okay, because Jake is coming with you instead. That's right. I... What? Yeah, remember, Jake? It's icy cold water. Icy cold water? Well, why didn't you say so? Let's go, Yorick. Come on, we've got my grading to do. Until next time, keep on seeing the world through the eyes of animals. Come on, everybody. Come on. So long, Yorick. Have a good time.